like like I wear it in general like when I'm not he- like in a professional setting I don't like I wear ratty sweatshirts like I've had this since college this is like at least eight years old um nice like and like just leggings it's like how I exist so when I wear school t-shirts I can justify it I'm like I'm being spirited you know I literally <laughs> just like pulled it out of my dresser and was like this will do for today uh, you're welcome <laughs> yeah I'm holding up the morale of this institution. <laughs> right. That's why I love to wear Purple Fridays, because I could justify wearing just like a like a t-shirt to work. I was like, here we go. This is great. So I noticed that at LSU, actually, I didn't have any purple clothes. Mm. But after leaving LSU, I now have purple clothes. It's very... Yeah. Yeah. I like it. That's All right. right. So we're talking about knives. Talking about knives. Um, we have the Gende Method... Uh, to consult. Yeah, so I bought this. I bought this a while ago when I realized I knew absolutely nothing about how to sharpen a knife. Um, I was like, this feels like a good start. So I bought this. All right, the Gende Book of Sharpening. Sharpen. Double hollow. Okay. Over... It's yeah, it's for double hollow ground. Um, I don't think they have anything about us like a, a whatever the other kind that we sometimes use is. Um, oh. I feel like I read some, there's some, they kind of mention it off and on in here about like, well, you could do this if you have this kind of knife. Oh, really? I don't know. So the book in general is like, it's like, there's a lot of information in there. Like if you had no idea at all how to sharpen a knife or what that entails, like about burr and like how you start with a rougher stone and then you like go to a smoother one and then your edge gets smoother. Like, I guess this would be good. Um, I find it to be almost like too much information. Like they go into like angles and they're like, giving you diagrams and I'm like, just tell me what to do so I can have a good edge. Um, <laughs> so basically, um, cause I have read through it and I understand it. It's just, it's not like, you know what I mean? It didn't like blow my mind. I was like, okay. Um, but I, I like the method that they use the nickel and the dime. I like those cause it's like you use the nickel and the dime as a guide, right? Should I get a nickel and dime? Sure, yeah. yeah like you go. use them as a guide on your stone. And for me, that helps me keep my angle really like intact. That's why I, I was always intrigued by that whole like Ferrillo knife and the like the Ferrillo knife sharpening system. Yeah. Because if you've seen those, it's like you just like clip your knife into this guide and then it keeps it at a steady angle all the time. Yeah, I saw it for the like, first time like earlier this year and I was really impressed. By yeah, it. I was like, that's so nice because I feel like that's where I get into trouble. I'm just like, my knife is, you know what I mean? I'm not being disciplined enough with my knife on the stone and I'm like always guessing at the angle. So this is kind of doing that, but. All right, so I'm going to get some points. To the system totes and i'll be right back got a nickel got a dime all right so let's talk for like a minute oh sorry hey emily how's it going yeah hi hey <laughs> I'm back in. all right so i got nickel and dime sweet i also me have too. a book called nickel and dimed have you heard of it yes me too i had to read that yes what are your thoughts <laughs> uh it was a long time ago i think it was seventh grade Oh, wow. Okay. But this one part really sticks out to me is when she uh, starts cleaning houses and she cleans the house of this like physical trainer. Like, uh, you know. Who I don't remember that part. Yeah. And the, the physical trainer is this lady who keeps like saying like, I always tell my clients that they want to get a good workout just to clean their houses. And then she talks about how like it is exhausting, but it's also like not good for your body <laughs> in any way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The part that stood out to me was when she works at Walmart and like, like basically she's not getting paid enough to live, but she gets a price discount on Walmart clothes. So then it's just like this constant, like you're just like paying more money into the corporation that's like not paying you enough money to live. It's like a terrible cycle. It's a serfdom. Yeah. All right. Wow, okay. That's a topic for another video. So, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> today we're talking about, uh... all right, so let's talk about the knives real fast. So double hollow ground is the kind of knife that uh you're using i saw it what kind of knife is it that you're using so this is a chud now it's like his deluxe knife which is basically like a regatti style chirugi knife like it's the same look yeah and what's yeah all right actually if you go to openfiles.com i have some close-ups oh you yeah that's a good video you guys can go see it and i'll put it in the description or something um and it's like the same kind of style as this guy's the jende knife um I've Ooh, never yeah. been able okay. to sharpen it. So, or like, so oh. <laughs> actually, we made a video <laughs> like sharpening this exact knife and it was good for like 
I don't know, one or two reads, and then like I haven't felt good about it ever since then. So today we're gonna try to make it feel better again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Okay, so then the it's the same as like a land well. The land well is like a yeah. You know, lots of people use that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, okay. Is there a difference between hollow, double hollow ground and razor? Those are like the same things, right? I think so. They I don't super same. understand. They look really similar. Yeah. If anyone I just know that I use a double hologram. Yeah, if you know the difference, let us know. Let us know for sure. Educate us. <laughs> um, but okay, so have you seen a Rigotti? Oh, I remember now, because it's called a Rigotti Razor, right? It's the name of the knife. Ooh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but I haven't seen those in forever. Like I've seen the Chirugi, like the copies of them. And of course yeah. I've put those knives, but I haven't seen a real like Rigotti knife in a while. I guess I don't know, me neither, but I never use them. So like it's not, it's not uncut, you know <laughs> no, what I mean? I used like, to use them. Like, okay. that was my knife. Yeah, and then like one day I just like couldn't really find them for sale. So I oh. started buying the Shrugi ones. Weird, I wonder what yeah. happened. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so we got our knives, two different kinds of knives. Oh, the other thing that I think is weird about the Jende knife is uh, it looks kind of like an ax. It does look like an ax. It's it, got a really it, wide blade. It's like, yeah, Whoosh. Yeah, it sticks out so far. Nice. Right. So you, you don't really use the Jenny knife, right? I have not. No, I've been using this. Okay. Uh, it's similar to what you're using. Um, Sweet. The Trugi copy of the Rigatti. <laughs> Sweet. What kind yeah, of stone we, do you have? Uh, so I'm going to use this uh, diamond stone. Sweet. OK. What about you? Do you know what grit that is? Uh, red. <laughs> the red? <laughs> OK, OK. Oh, shoot. I'm not sure. What other kind of stones do you use? Do you like have a couple? Like what's yeah. your... So I'm going to use, uh, let's see if it says here. No, it doesn't. Okay, I'm going to use the diamond whetstone. Okay. I'm going to use the ceramic stone, which is fine. Okay. This, is, this is like Kilmer stone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Definitely. It's like, it comes in the blue like case. Right? right. I have this one, but it's, I think it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, is that the only stone you use? Well, so I actually have quite a few stones. Because in the Gen Day book, like they recommend using those Shapton stones, like the, the water stones, just like oh, okay. this, and they come in different colors. And they recommend yeah. using, like I only own this one, the blue one, which I think is 1500, as far as like grit. coarseness. Um, and usually this is, like I use this one, I'm using this nickel dye method, and then I finish it on this like smoother one yeah. And then I'll use like a sharpening steel to like really like get my angle set. Like a rod? Yeah. Yeah. I love um, good. Um, uh, oh, you you froze, so I can't tell if that was a joke that hit or not. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you got um, garbled. You want to say your joke again? No, no, no. I don't. I really, <laughs> it was bad. It wasn't good. <laughs> Like in the past, because I also have the same diamond stone, but sometimes I feel like this is really coarse. It's really cool. like it takes a ton of metal off my knife, and then sometimes when I use this, I feel like I make my knife edge too brittle. Yeah. You know, which some people want. I think. I think like some people look for that. I find that I just decimate my reeds when I have a knife like a, an edge that's too sharp. Right. 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 So I guess I've lately, and I'm not sure I always achieve it, but I'm. You just like trying to find that balance between like having a good angle and it being nice and clean and sharp yeah. um, enough, but like not too far that you just decimate everything your knife touches. Cause that's the right. trap I personally fall into. I have this India stone that I'm trying to find right now that I barely ever use, but it might be appropriate for this knife. Now I'm thinking about it, but that's okay. Nice. We'll use it another time. All right. So I also have an old, yeah, I have an old India stone, but I used to use it with honing oil and I like don't have any of that lying around. So I just haven't been using it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I don't even know. there's lots of toys you end up collecting. Uh, I know. I've collected a lot over the past couple of years. Some of it's been given to me. Some of it, like this is what I bought in college. Just like my first ever stone. Yeah. I still have. Um, I have this random, since we're doing show and tell. Yeah, do show and tell. I have like this random thing that my old teacher gave me that some student gave to him. I, I used to use like, one of those. Yeah, all the directions are in an Asian language, I don't know which one. Um, and it's got like two different sides to it. It's like really 
rough and like a lot finer. Yeah. This someone is pretty dirty. Point, this needs to be cleaned. Yeah. Like someone told me at some point that you had to like soak those. Yes. And that's because that's what I had seen my teacher do. And I don't really know because it came with like a little direction packet at one point, which they were all in symbols, like like an Asian language. So I have like no idea what it said. So then I was just like based, like trying to like look it up, but I don't even know how to Google this, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but somehow I think I found something that looked really similar to it, which told me that the rough side was like a 500 grit. And the smooth side was a 1200 grit okay. so that matters i'm just trying to like kind of compare it to what i had but yeah i had always seen him soak it in like a bread pan yeah for like five minutes so i don't really use it much because it feels really messy i don't want to have to soak it oh it's a mess yeah and I, yeah. I i don't know where mine is now but someone gave one to me as well um actually i think like freshman year yeah someone gave one to me and i didn't really know like how to sharpen a knife at all anyway so yeah <laughs> yeah all right uh so walk me through the method so i got my nickel and all my right time. so essentially you sharpen like the bottom part of the blade so like if you have your stone i guess yours is facing like horizontal so you're if you're right-handed the spine of the knife is on the left and the, okay. the blade is to the right basically okay. so basically you you take a dime i wish i could show you this I didn't right. should, like use my phone. Move you like put a dime on your on your sharpening stone. All right, you right? Can see me, right? What? Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see yours. Just I'm like just this is, my read desk and my work desk are the same like crappy twenty dollar piece of desk I bought from Target like a long time ago. So well, what I'm saying <laughs> is that you can you can troubleshoot like by if I'm doing something. Weird. Yeah, yeah, I can see you. I'm good. So like basically you you put your the edge on the stone and then you rest the spine of the knife on the dime and that's your angle. Got it. And then you just you just take some strokes that way like ten to thirty strokes or whatever until you start to like feel like you've got to like the right. new metal. Yeah, to the right. Okay. So I actually do this part with my stone like up and down. Oh, okay. And I'm just like going up and down but that way you don't always get the whole weight of the knife on the stone at one time so that can be a little tricky so i understand why people don't like that right so you're trying like this yeah okay like that's how i have been doing it because it's i feel like i get i keep my angle more consistent that way but you could do it either way uh i'm gonna try the way that you described sweet oh. and i use a little bit of like water on these shapkin stones so i just put some on there clear out some space here so i got like a lot of homework remaking recently um i'm sending some reads to australia Ooh, that's kind of cool that'll be interesting but i'm just making like i feel like i'm always making reads now which is cool i've been like, doing research on how to how to ship things which is Ooh, that is cool yeah all right so what i see you're doing you're taking strokes up so i actually will keep my knife on the stone and go up and down oh okay like all the way like back and forth basically yeah and like i try to keep like i keep the dime there to make sure that i'm keeping like relatively the same angle all right so i'm gonna be right back because i need something to more stabilize the stone for this okay so we got our nickel and same thing same thing just kind of like I try to check for the burr more often than not because I don't want to overdo it. Oh, you can overdo it? Well, again, I just, I'm like really cautious sometimes. I think that I, I've gone overboard and I've like really taken too much metal off my knife or like more than I needed to. Okay. Which just wears you down your knife faster. So like right now I can feel a little bit of it forming. Yeah, I definitely feel a burr now. Yeah, I'm gonna do just like a little bit more to even it out because it feels more up here than down there. I also feel like I can smell the steel, you know? Oh yeah, I always smell it on my hands for like days, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's definitely a burr, all right. Sweet. And then what you do is you move to the other side of your knife. Yeah, I can yeah. feel mine too, it feels nice. Um, with your dime, uh, so like you put your not your knife at the opposite edge of the stone with the blade facing towards you. Okay. So now you're you're like sharpening the the um, like the front face basically of your knife. Okay. And same thing. And then same thing kind of thing. Now you're trying to basically move the burr from where it was the other direction. Okay. Ooh. 
Oops. This is a little bit more it's coordinated. A little trickier. Yeah. I usually keep my knife like angled, kind of. Oh, like angled? Like this. Oh. Yeah, trying to like keep more of it on the stone at one time because oh, it's harder idea. for me to control. Yeah, like All right, so that's a cool pro tip. Pro tip. <laughs> And I've seen people do like figure A patterns and like these like V, W like patterns across the stone. I'm just, just trying okay. to like take it up and down at a consistent angle. <laughs> it's like enough for me to focus on. Yeah, it's already like I can feel like the inconsistency in my hands. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. So do you kind of feel it? Yeah, do you feel it on the other side now? Yeah. All right, so then we're going to take back to the beginning, like where we were, um, like with the knife close to you, mm -hmm. uh, with your nickel angle. And you're just gonna do like, basically like one pass up the stone on the knife to wipe that burr off and fold it the other way. Okay. So I'm also gonna angle my knife here because I don't know, otherwise I'm not sure how to, nah, I can just travel across the stone, just kidding. So, cause we're trying to just do one pass. Right, I'm trying to find like a good angle for that. There we go. Okay. Do you feel it? I feel just like wrapped it around. But so it for me, actually, I feel it feels much better. Mine, okay. like I, I can feel the. I'm trying to feel like I could feel the burr from one side. It doesn't want to close. It's cool. Um, now I can feel it on the other side. Um, and so then, what the Gen A method tells you to do is to basically go from your like medium grit stone and do the same process on a finer grit stone. Okay. Um, I don't have like, I think the next thing I'm going to buy is like a finer grit shaft and sharpening stone, like the 5,000 one maybe. Well, your black stone looks like it's really fine. It is really fine. That's the thing. I feel like it's almost too fine for this stage, but I do it on there anyways. Okay. Sometimes I'll actually just like wipe it, like just polishing it, you know? Yeah. If that makes sense, just like. trying to like polish the edge off, except this yeah. stone has a small nick on it in that side, which oh. is why I don't use that side very often. Um, All right, so I'm gonna repeat the process trying... starting with the dime, right? Yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go too much actually with this one, but just okay. a little bit. Let's see. Nice. So I was thinking like, Mr. Kilmer would just use the one stone, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, which I don't really understand. That's why he kept his knife so sharp. Well, um, I, I used to like rationalize like, I wonder if he's just like using a lot more strength than I am, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Cause he definitely, you know, he makes reads in this really wholesale way where he just like peels off a couple of strips of cane and he's got like this beautifully structured tip. Right. Um, which I personally could never like master like that. I still can't really do it. Um, you have to do it in smaller scrapes. I think the only person I've seen truly make reads like that. Oh, I have a blank tide. I forgot about. <laughs> <laughs> um, is uh, Janet Ingle. Have you seen her videos? Ooh, I've not actually seen her read. I've seen other videos of hers. I haven't seen her read making yeah. videos. Which they're really that. interesting. And they're, you know, she makes good reads, but yeah, she yeah. really like does. I mean, I used to make reads that way, but I didn't feel like they were uh, as like methodical or as successful, you know? Yeah, same. Like, at least because I tried to make reads like that when I was in grad school because that's what Mr. Yeah. Comer did. So I was like, all right. Right. That's how we, we make do reads. It. Yeah. Exactly like this. Um, and I don't know that I ever got it. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of people go through and they don't make reads like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Um, I think what most people end up doing is what I do now, which is like a hybrid. Yeah, most people like hybridize All there. the teachers I've ever studied read making with, I'm just like yeah. kind of combining those together to try to make it work for me. Right. Oh, I should have had a, actually, I think I do have a blank. Okay, and then one of my favorite thing, Mr. Kilmer. Sorry, go for it. The last thing is one pass with the nickel height. Yeah, just one pass with the, like on the back side. So 
with the blade facing, yeah, exactly. Just to wipe that bar off. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, it feels pretty sharp to me. Yeah, me too. And then I'm actually going to use my sharpening rod. Yeah, me too. This is like my favorite find it. read tool. <laughs> a yeah, and it also doubles as like a heavy duty nightstick. If you ever like were, you know, walking around somewhere. Really? You had this in your bag and you ran into trouble. I would absolutely pull this out. I would agree with you except for this. like this aspect of it. Yeah, that, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> It's so he it's like so satisfying to hold though. It's so heavy. I can get a sword. So how do you use this? Because I've I, seen different ways for it. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of ways. I see people like put it like this or like right. face it towards them. I use it as if it were a stone. So I'll just like put it flat like Ooh, that. okay. So you? like what are your what angles are you like what are you doing to it right now? Yeah, so that's the worst part. And so what I'll do is I'll feel like the I'll put my finger here on the end of it. Yeah. I'll uh, put the edge of the knife back here and just kind of feel for like a little gap. Okay. But I don't know if that's the best way. <laughs> Actually, I think in the directions that this comes with, yeah, it tells you to use it like you're using it, like a stone, which is why it has that flat part on it. Right. That's so why you can lay yeah. it flat. Right. I'm gonna try that. <laughs> But like I've seen people who like use it really well, you know, and they'll hold it up like that and just go shh, shh, shh or whatever. Ooh, like a kitchen knife? Yeah. I usually I usually stand it up. Like I said, I don't know if you can see. Like I just stand it up. You can't. Yeah. Um, on the table and then like tilt it different ways. But and people and people do really good good work like that, you know, like everyone's got their thing. I'm excited to use this knife. It feels really sharp. I hope it works out. Sometimes I feel like I'll sharpen my knife and it will feel really sharp. And then when I get it onto a reed, I hate it. Really? Yeah, every once in a while. And I'm not sure what I do. Actually, I'm looking at mine though and I can see the new edge that I've just put on and it feels really satisfying. Yeah, I really like it right now, actually. Um, well, I don't know. Uh-oh, <laughs> see? It definitely takes, it's just not taking off cane, like, I don't have to use any pressure, and it is taking cane off, I don't know if you can see, like. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's taking cane off for sure. Oh, I just dropped some cane in my tea. Oh, <sighs> man. <laughs> Hope of life. Um, but I like it when, here, let me use my other knife. I'm going it. It just, like, I like it when it just, like, like, takes off, like, whole yeah. shit, you know? Um, I have a third knife or somewhere. Um, Ooh, I feel the same thing actually in the way I'm doing mine. I think it's just the angle that I've set the burr at. I'm not super happy with. Yeah, it's not that different. It might be. Better. Actually, it feels pretty good there. Ooh, actually, that feels pretty good. All right. All right, so you teach a lot of remaking now, right? Um, yeah, I do. I end up teaching a bit What's of like the first thing that people have to like get a handle on? No, they can't move on until they get this one thing. It's a really good blank. I'm sorry? Like a blank. It's like, I think it's for me, it's usually tying a really good blank, like tying a blank that measures correctly yeah. and is um, like lined up the right way and it seals all the way up and it's the right, it's not over to, you know what I mean? Just like a really solid blank. Yeah. Because then everything after that, if your blank isn't good, everything after that, like your read's yeah. not going to work out no matter yeah. what. So like you can practice your knife stroke on a bad blank. Honestly, think, you know what I mean? Yeah, like I think never the, knife stroke thing, the knife stroke thing I think is overrated. Yeah, because you good. figure it out as you go. Yeah, like you're gonna get better at the knife stroke for sure. But okay, so that, that was something I struggled with is like I would show reads for a while um, 
like right after I graduated. I remember show reads to like teachers that I was trying to work with and uh, you know, like yeah. try to find where I would audition for grad school. And uh, and people would say like, oh, like your knife stroke looks really good. Like this looks like a really professional read, but it doesn't work. <laughs> like, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so like, yeah, there's, there's a lot more of the read than like just making the knife stroke clean. Definitely. I mean, a good knife stroke is also important, right? Like. Oh, sure. It definitely helps. But there are reads that look terrible and function. I know. It's like that. Oh, I just, I finally, I had, to, so I took my knife actually back to the stone a couple more times. Oh, okay. And now I, this like ceramic black stone that I have, and now I super love it. So nice. I'm glad I got that. Oh, so um, thanks for showing the agenda method. That's super interesting. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I'm happy to, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say this on video, but if you want me to like take a picture of any of these pages and send it to you. Uh, we don't want to get like, in trouble, That's true. you know, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, though, to be honest, like, because a couple of, I, I tried, I wanted to do this a few, like, when the quarantine shelter in place first started, and I didn't have my book. So I tried to look it up online. Mm. And it was hard to find. I found one video, and I had to kind of scroll through YouTube. I guess it's well yeah. Um, but, yeah, but yeah. it's just nickel dime. It's you use a dime, you use a nickel, you use a nickel or a dime on the other side, you wipe it off with a nickel. You do that a bunch of times right. on some different stones. That's the method. If you don't remember, you can always rewind on this video and watch me <laughs> learn how to do it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not. I just always, I always keep the book handy because I always sometimes forget the order of things because mm -hmm. I don't do it very often. Right. Maybe I should be doing it more often. Okay, for sure, it took a lot of cane off. It was enough to make it but can we actually nice. make it i wish i had like a piece of like a blank with more cane on it to scrape but that's okay. <laughs> you can always make another read can make another read i'm gonna do it i'm gonna need some read water <laughs> Ah. All right, so I'm for a run this morning. Um, and usually when I go, it's like pretty empty. Like I'll usually go to this little like park close to my home. Uh, but this morning it was like really populated. And I was like, what that's is, a bummer. Yeah, what is different about today? That has inspired everyone to come out, you know? I hate when that happens to my places that I like consider to be just mine, even though I'm well aware of that they're public spaces, lots of people will probably public. enjoy. Yeah. But even on like a normal day and I'm like out and there's people out, I'm like, oh, dang it. Let alone like the rare moments like in the quarantine where like I feel like everyone's like, yeah, making a break for these nice public areas because what else is there to do? Well, it's just strange the hour because I feel like when it's so early, like why would, you know? Oh, that you gotta really weird. try to get out there. Then. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I don't. I can't. I'm not out early. I always want to be that person that can get up and like exercise first thing. Yeah. But I don't think that I am. You know. I mean, it's just like everything else, right? It's just like a habit you build over time. But I feel like I've made attempts to build that habit like many, many times in my life. Oh really? <laughs> and it's just like not, not for me. I've definitely got through phases. Oh, we got something. Woo! All right. Oh, so I haven't bought, I got a, I'm buying a new vocal. I don't know if I told you about this. Ooh, fun. Yeah, so I, I made a video actually where I was trying the first round. Oh, that sounds promising. And it's kind of thin. Um, but I, I thought I was going to buy a Hineker, but I've tried these uh, Lorray Etole. Etole. Et I don't know how you say okay. it. Okay. You know are, are those the ones that have like a star on them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the kind of vocal that I have. And it's, 
I Great. really like it like so much more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't try any Hinnikers or anything, but mm, I really like the, but, but yeah, I was using this two H that came with the English horn and I didn't realize like a lot of my problems were that vocal. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That's the crazy thing about English horn. Like how much of a difference those make. It's a hard, it's like, cause I feel like our minds are just like, it's the read, like make a better read, but right. sometimes you just need a better vocal. <laughs> Yeah, I bought my English horn is is really old and it's like I bought it for pretty cheap. Mm. And it's got like a ton of old cracks in it that have been repaired. Like the whole backside is just you can tell it had a huge crack down the entire top joint that's like okay. very clearly just been like glued. Um, but with that specific vocal, I can still get a pretty decent core sound. And I like play it at like at gigs. Nice. Um, I like won a small audition on that in instrument. So like nice. I don't know. I don't feel like I can justify spending 20 grand on a new one. No, I don't think so. Well, until, like, unless I'm like... But, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. feel with your knife that you have to kind of break it in after you sharpen it break it in no. like sometimes i feel like with my edge right now it almost like i still think it's a little bit too grabby for what i would love and it just needs to i feel like it's too sharp you know what i mean really? i just need to like scrape on some bark for a little bit and okay. it will like give a little bit more so i could put a little more pressure into it i actually don't like that <laughs> like i like it to Ooh, be, like, okay. really, yeah like like where you say grabby yeah um yeah, I kind of like that. Ooh, okay. Yeah, usually when I put a new edge on my knife, I try not to do like the finishing stages of a read with it because I know it's going to be... It's too much. It's too much for me to control. Right. But I'm attempting to do that right now and it's working out with limited success. I still think of you every time I make an English horn read when okay. I put the wire on because you taught me how to put a wire on. Um, I English horn read. <laughs> yeah. Cause like I had never made an English horn read before. And then Mr. Kilmer just like wrapped this wire around. He was like, here's how you do it. And I was like, and it's always like in the moment I was like, yeah, I get, I know how to do it. And the next time I was in the read room, I was like, I don't, I don't know how to do this. Yeah, really <laughs> you were like, all right, Emily, first step, wire economy. Cause I had this like <laughs> giant piece of wire. I was like wrapping around my read. That's so funny. Um, that's so funny. Yeah, I remember feeling that a lot. Like, just going to just do it so easily, and you're like, I totally got this. Right. I would, like, go home after my lessons and be like, oh, I'm going to make reads all day. It's going to be awesome. And then, like, an hour later, or, like, I'm just sitting at this desk of, like, read carcasses, like, <laughs> like really crying. Like, I remember when I first started making reads at Eastman, like, I, uh, I would start from the bottom, like, where the back would be. And I would try to do what he does, where he would just go, whoosh, you know? Right, right, right. Dip somehow. And I would like tear so deep into the reed. Yes. That it would like, you know, it would just pierce through into the cavity of the internal <laughs> reed. <laughs> right, right, right. It was really dramatic. Pierce through. But I guess I'm not even Like instant dub. <laughs> Yeah, actually, my teacher in undergrad, how he used to make the back of the reed, the windows, mm -hmm. he used to kind of do it like that, where he would, and I used to do it like that, too, when I was in college, because I figured out how to do it. Mm -hmm. He used to, like, basically, like, just peel the whole back of the reed off in one swoop. In one go, yeah. Like, like, he would just kind of, like, he would get his knife in there and just dig it up, and then, like, peel it up at where the back of the heart was supposed to be, and then that was it. Yeah, it's wild. It, you know, it makes it like that is, uh, you know, like death and transfiguration, the Strauss. Yeah. It's like, that's the story of like the read. Right? Like, <laughs> 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 oh, that's gonna be way too readily. But then maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, 
it's got it's got some somewhere to go for sure. Nice. I, with my very sharp knife, took off a large portion of the tip. Nice. And I just clipped it down to where it's a little more clean. So now my reed is super sharp. The reed is super sharp? Yeah. Okay, what do you like your reed to crow at, like, at the beginning stages? I mean, I would love for my reeds to be crowing a C all the time. Uh-huh. Like consistently, that's always the dream. I'm not saying I necessarily achieve that. <laughs> the dream. Because there are sometimes where I'm going to read and it's crowing just like a little above a C or a little below. And I think, like, you know, you reach a point with your reads where you're like, just done working on it for the day. Yeah. So sometimes, like, I'm like, if it's like that and I know that if I touch the read, I'm just going to probably do something I regret, I just put it away no matter what it's crowing at. Like, for sure. come back to it again. I, I, Sorry, crow that again because that sounds pretty. That's right. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, the uh, yeah, that's a hard lesson <laughs> to learn. Yeah, because and I I still struggle with that because I get into these funks and I'm like I need to make reads and then I at the end of every day I'm like shoot I should have just stopped yeah I and stop. taken a break and I would have been more productive. I feel like that's true with like a lot of situations though you know. Yeah, it's really like read making. I think makes it more obvious in some ways like makes it super micro, you know? Cause like yeah. every little scrape that you do matters. Right. Such a life lesson, you know? So much we can learn. <laughs> Remaking for sure. Oh, I just put a hole in it. All right, let's see if we can get it out. See, like, um, yeah, like, I mean, it's possible to do that with practicing, right? Like, you ever you have those times where you practice for an hour and then you're like, what did I even work on? Did I even accomplish anything? Like, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Would have been, would have been better to just like do something else for an hour and then come back to it later. Yeah, and now it's too dark to go outside. Right. <laughs> yeah, and especially like for me during my when I'm teaching a lot during the day, um, like I have these little tiny pockets during the day where I feel like I have to practice during them because I have to make advantage of like every second of free time. Yeah. But sometimes I'm not always prepared to be practicing during those times, but I do anyways, and it's just yeah to get myself focused. So I had a master class with some high school students yesterday. Cool. It was super On Zoom? fun. What is it? Yeah, on Zoom. Oh, fun. That's so exciting. Yeah. And uh, the one, okay, so they had planned that only one of them was going to play. They basically just wanted to have like a zoo lesson, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Like, everyone get out your own phones. <laughs> There's something for everyone here. <laughs> and the one girl who came to be prepared was playing, uh, she just started working on the Mozart uh, concerto, right? Nice. She's a senior. And uh, ah. yeah, it was super fun. But I was thinking about like, I remember the first time that I tried to learn it, like, I really did think it was just all about technique, you know? The so Mozart? Kind of fast. Yeah, I thought it was just like, this is like a yeah, technique. Yeah, me too. Now I feel the opposite. <laughs> right? So I'm switching knives a bit to see like the comparative advantage. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing that too. I should have done it earlier because I tore another hole in the corner of this. Oh really? Oh no. It's not bad. I can come back. <laughs> yeah, I think I enjoy the Mozart. I used to hate playing the Mozart concerto. Like I really? thought I was like, I don't like this at all. Like I don't like listening to it. I don't like playing it. But now that I think of it in a lot more, like, it was Mr. Kilmer, it was like, this is just opera. Yeah. It's all opera. And now that I, and now I, like, I feel like as soon as he said that, I was like, oh. I get that. And now I definitely enjoy playing it more. Yeah.
I've listened to the Motor Clarinet Concert a lot recently, actually. Why? <laughs> Just for fun? I really like it, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, here. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my favorite. Hey, do you have a pen? Yeah. Here. Uh, hang on. Is it pencil or pen? It's a pen. Pen. Okay, good. All right. So go ahead and, go ahead and throw it at me. I don't want to like hit my computer. Like... No, no, throw it over. Throw it over. Oh my god, thanks. Oh! <laughs> Man, now I gotta get this pen. <laughs> Fell on the floor, gotta bend down. Oh All right, try that read. I'm curious. All right, we probably too. wrap this up because I gotta go teach. Ooh, fun. Yeah. What are you teaching today? Uh, just a student. We're working on, we're probably gonna do some scales. <laughs> right. Is this the read? I have two reads of the same color out here, and now I can't. One. Should turn on my sound. My bad. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's not bad. That seems like it's really good. I would like it to hold up a little better. I feel like I'm biting a little bit. Like oh, really? I want to. Just a little bit. Like mm. on the high notes. Yeah. Which is something that I've noticed a lot in my playing lately. So mm. I'm trying to like slowly correct that in like both my remaking and my actual armature. So nice. It's like a long process. It's I not... feel you, man. It is most yeah. of this whole thing is, is slow steps. Yeah. But I just want it to be better now. No, okay. Sorry. Go for it. <laughs> Oh no, I think we got a lot. So we got, we learned how to sharpen knives, talk about read making, those are super fun. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's like, as far as like read sharpening, read sharpening, knife sharpening goes, like this Gen A method, like I think for me, it's been the most consistent method that I've used, but like mm -hmm. I see all kinds of stuff out there, so. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, there's definitely thousands of ways try that it all. are great, yeah. We should do I'm one. always trying new things. Did you ever sharpen your knife with Mr. Kimmer does where it just goes like shh, shh. Yeah, but I feel like I, that like worked for me when I was there and now that I'm out of school, every time I try it, I'm just like, this isn't, this doesn't do anything. Like, I don't understand it. Really? I occasionally so, do it with, uh, but it only works with this knife. Okay. With, yeah, with one of my real old knives. Um, and I don't know why. What was it he did again? It's like, I feel like it was like two o'clock, 10 o'clock and then flat. That's it. Yeah. So it's two o'clock, like on the back, on the front side of the knife, right? Mm. Like towards you. Yeah. Two o'clock and then 10 o'clock away from you. Well, he goes left right? to right, but yeah. So 10 o'clock to the right, basically. Right. And then you wipe it flat, right? Mm -hmm. Well, feels nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just all good kinds of different stuff. But anyway, Ooh, uh, I'm going to get out of here. Super sharp. And, All right, cool. Uh, Have a good lesson. Yeah, thanks. Have a good read. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Emily. Bye. Thanks. Oh, don't forget to subscribe, like, all that stuff. See you guys. Okay, <laughs> okay bye.